Hello everyone, I'm coming at you guys today with my review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This particular episode was not a smash hit, not a lot to talk about, but we'll just go ahead and get into this review. Greg was playing in Nene's closet while Nene was packing up for her trip to Savannah. Candy went over to Cynthia's house so that she can talk to her, basically vent and let out a good cry. Because she feels that Cynthia is the person that she needs to talk to, being that Cynthia was in a similar situation with her mom when she was getting married to Peter. So basically, Candy filled her in on what happened at the bridal shop the previous episode with her mom and her best friend Carmen. And like I said, she needed to get out a good cry and that's just what she did. Out of all the attorneys in the city of Atlanta and the surrounding cities, Mama Joyce, Joyce, Miss Joyce, whatever you want to call her, she made it her business to meet up with Phaedra because she said that she needed to get some legal advice. Aiden, which is Phaedra's son, he was in her office, and then when Joyce walked in, Aiden did not want to speak to Joyce whatsoever. No matter how much Phaedra tried to bribe him, he was like, look, I don't want any treats, and he did not speak to Joyce whatsoever. Now, when you catch a child that act like that towards their elders, you need to take heed, because sometimes children, they can pick up evil spirits from people. So Joyce was a woman on a mission, and basically her mission was to find out if Candy has been talking to Phaedra as far as, like, you know, her will and all that type of stuff. So um, Phaedra just basically told Joyce that, you know, Candy always told her that if anything happens to her, that her mind will be taken care of. And that is all Joyce needed to hear at the end of the day because she want to make sure that she's straight if anything happens to candy or if anything happens to their marriage she just want to make sure that her lights her water her gas all of her bills are taken care of she want to make sure that she will have card money and bingo money and she want to make sure that the house that candy gave her will remain hers when I tell you Joyce was giving me lifetime moving network when she went in on Phaedra, when she told Phaedra, how could you hook my daughter up with the help? And I was like, girl, Joyce, you better be careful what you say on national TV because these camera people work for Bravo. And Bravo is cutting you a check for your little appearances and all that type of stuff. But when I tell you she sat back in her chair and she sipped that water from her glass with that pinky up, and she looked Phaedra dead in the eye. I was like, Joyce, I'm too through with you. So Kenya and her friend were in her empty closet packing for her trip to Savannah. Long story short, she was packing up a gun. And she said the reason why she's bringing this gun is in case Phaedra try to, you know, come at her sideways. She got something for her. Now, the human resources person at Bravo, you guys need to go ahead and enforce a policy. Because y'all can't be having these crazy people carrying guns. Because if anything happens to these people, you guys will be held accountable for it. Thing one and thing two, you know who that is, Portia and her little sister Lauren, where they were in the mall and they were looking for some things for Portia to bring with her uh, for her trip to Savannah. When I tell you her little sister came up in there with a wife beater and some leggings, I was like, Portia, you wrong for that. You need to go ahead and hit up Wet Seal Forever 21 for your sister as well. But anyways, she was trying on $7,000 shoes and then at the end of the day, she purchased some, uh, some boots that was $3,500. And I'm like, Portia, you don't have any money. The only money you're getting at this point is spousal support. The money that you're getting is $5,000 a month to take care of your bills, your rent, and your utilities. Now, Portia, you really need to be careful of what you display on national TV because what's going to happen is you're going to wind up paying all that money back to Cordell because you're not using it to what it's really for. Nene and Monique, Monique, whatever you want to call her, they arrived at the clubhouse that's in Nene's neighborhood, and I believe the name of it was St. Marlowe's Clubhouse. Now, during Nene's commentary, she was stunned a little bit too hard, talking about she have a clubhouse in her neighborhood, and most of these girls don't have one. Girl fairy tales. Apartments nowadays have a clubhouse in their community, so come again on that one. Anyways, Greg, his job was to basically greet the ladies as they arrived. And his outfit of the day was just so nursing home-like. When I tell you, he had on some loafers. He had on some calf-length linen shorts. He had on this white button-up shirt. And he had this powder blue blazer on, giving us nothing but retirement home swag. 
Nene also had this picnic basket and inside of it was three bottles of Ciroc. She had like a package of Lance peanut butter cracker sandwiches. She had, I think it was Moet. She had a small bag of Lay's sour cream and onion potato chips. And that was pretty much it. So everybody was supposed to meet up at 11 o'clock, but this troll, Kenya, she arrived at 11.25 a.m. So this lady, she came out and she delivered the tray of fruit and the mimosas for the ladies as they arrived. And when I tell you there were so many flies, I mean flies everywhere, all over the food, they were trying to cover everything up. In fact, one of the flies committed suicide. I guess he jumped off the edge of Kenya's glass and just dove right into the, the mimosa and just died. So anyways, Kenya was going off about everybody being late and she was like, you know, if it was her trip, she would just pack up everything and make it a three-person trip. So anyways, they were all like, you know, I bet the next person that arrived would be Cynthia because she's usually on time for everything. So at 12 p.m., Cynthia arrived. So after Cynthia arrived, everybody guessed that Portia would be the next to arrive. And Cynthia was like, you know, sometimes it takes people longer than others to get themselves together. And so Kenya Moore, of all people, had the audacity to say she don't understand why it would take so long for Portia to get ready because she has basic weave, basic makeup. What can she do for herself? And I'm like, Kenya Moore, I mean, you say what you want about Portia. Yeah, she's a few cents short of a dollar. She's missing some screws. She don't have all of her marbles. Her elevator stops somewhere. But one thing about Portia, she's always together. So Portia arrived and once again she's talking about her big fall, talking about her headaches and stuff like that. And you already know, I believe that Portia suffers from Munchausen syndrome. So at 1.45, Candy arrives, and Kenya was like, Candy, why are you late? And Candy was like, well, I stopped, give me something to eat, and then there was traffic. And Kenya, during her commentary, she had the audacity to say that Candy can stand to miss about five plates. Now, Kenya Moore, you know what, I'm going to save my read for you for the end of this review. Last but not least... Phaedra. She arrived at 2 p.m. So everybody hurried to the van. They were getting together, getting everybody loaded up and all this type of stuff. And then Kenya, I guess she felt that she was the principal of the trip or whatever. She got up. She was like, look, she laid down the law and she went in on everybody about being late. She was like, look, I don't like you guys being late because I'm always on time. And I'm like, Kenya Troll, you arrived at 11.25 a.m. You were supposed to be there at 11 a.m. So, Troll, you were late. So, we already know that Candy, she was not the person that you wanted to fuck with at that time. She just let out a big cry. She got so much on her head regarding this wedding, her mom or her best friend Carmen. She just confronted her mom. So, right now, you're about to feel the wrath of Candy. So Kenya, she was really going in on everybody talking about, look, Nene is going to get the first best room and she's going to get the second best room because she was the second person that arrived on time. And Monique was like, no, I was the second person that arrived on time. So Kenya and Candy kind of, you know, exchanged words and, and that was pretty much it. Now, Kenya... When you say that somebody is basic, troll, you are as basic as they come. When I tell you, you were on Wendy Williams' show last week talking about your your Nigerian guy, talking about he came for money, he got so much money, he loved you so much. Troll, how come you got put out your house? I mean, you got an eviction on your credit, first of all. The sheriff came to your house to make sure that you got those two boxes out your house. Now, you never had no furniture. Last season, Troll, when you cooked that meal for your aunt and your cousin, girl, you didn't even have the proper bakeware. You moved in a Super 8 motel. Nene got you out there to try to find you a place. You couldn't find anything because you know nobody's going to rent to you because you have an eviction on your credit. Then Lawrence... I guess he co-signed for you. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt on that one because I really don't believe that anybody will rent to you with an eviction on your credit. Now, you still don't have any furniture. Now, you claim this man is so rich and he loves you, he worships you and everything like that. How come he didn't buy you a living room set from rooms to go? And then on top of that, how come you asked Nene if the handyman that she was going to refer you to 
you know, in case you need some things fixed up in your house, if you can unclog your pipes, Girl, please sit down somewhere. And another thing, Kenya, your left side of your face is on a flat. I don't know what you did to yourself this season, but girl, you need to stop it. Goodyear, Shell, Racetrack, one of those stores you need to hook up with them and get some fixer flat for your damn face. So guys, that is my review on this particular episode. But until my next review, bye.